Welcome to another episode of Seven Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So the outline of our lecture is first we're going to give some introduction, then we're going to talk about the history and physical exam, and then we're going to talk about the diagnostic criteria and the management. And then another topic related to the prophylaxis against SVP. So first, what's the definition of SPP? It is infection without evident intra-abdominal surgically treatable source. So if you have evidence of gallbladder perforation or abdicitis, this is most likely will be a secondary bacterial peritonitis, and not SPP. Associated with liver cirrhosis complicated with ascites. And it has very high mortality. So early detection is very important. And also the other important thing that it has high risk for hepatorenal syndrome. So for the history and physical exam, the patient may come with Diffuse abdominal pain, but might be subtle pain sometimes. They might have fever, altered mental status, and diarrhea. So even if you don't have all of those and you have patients with liver cirrhosis and ascites, you have to suspect SBP. Some severe symptoms that the patient may get include hypothermia, hypotension, and parathic alias. So the first step in the diagnosis and the management of SPP, uh, we have to do paracentesis. And if the polymorphonuclear cells is more than 250 in millimeter, then this is diagnostic. We have to do cultures, anaerobic and aerobic in the blood culture bottles, and we have to do gram stain. And we have also to do some extra tests to define if we are dealing with uh, a portal hypertension or non portal hypertension ascites, uh, like glucose, LDH, total protein, amylase, albumin, bilirubin, and some of these tests will help also risk certify our patient, like the total protein. The next step after we get our uh, ascitic fluid to calculate the SAG, which is the serum albumin ascites fluid gradient. So we uh, subtract the albumin in the acetic fluid from the serum albumin. And if the value more than 1.1, this indicates portal hypertension and SPP more likely. If it, if it less than 1.1, SPP less likely. And also another indicator, if the total protein less than 1, SPP uh, more likely. So for the treatment, first line, we have to discontinue beta blocker. Many patients with liver cirrhosis on beta blocker to protect against uh, very severe bleeding, but beta blocker are associated with poor outcome in SPP. Then the management. If we have a confirmed SPP with polymorphonuclear cells more than 250, we give antibiotics. If we don't have any clear evidence of SPP, but we have high suspicion with temperature, abdominal tenderness, alter mental status, and bacteria in the acetic fluid, then we also give empiric antibiotic therapy. Also, we may need to give albumin 1.5 gram per kilogram within six hours from diagnosis followed by one gram per kilogram on day three to prevent hepatorenal syndrome. And if there is renal failure developed, we treat it as hepatorenal syndrome with ectriotide, metadrine, and albumin. And please refer to our hepatorenal syndrome lecture for further details. So the antibiotic regimen, uh, the most preferred is cefotaxime, 2 gram Q8 hours, 
and it has good penetration to the acidic fluid and the blood, and there is no need for those adjustment in azotemia. Siftrex on 2 gram daily is preferable, but it can do the job. Superfluoxacin can be done if they cannot tolerate cephalosporin, but it just should not be used if the patient was on superfluoxacin prophylaxis. Oral antibiotic can be given if uncomplicated. Ofloxacin 400 mg twice daily. Cipro can be given first IV, 200 mg Q12 hours for 2 days, then followed by Cipro oral Q12 hours for 5 days. And generally speaking, you can start always by IV, then you can de-escalate to oral once the patient improves. And the management course is 5 to 7 days and up to 10 days. So after we talked about the regimen for the management of SPP, we're going to talk when to give antibiotics prophylaxis against SPP. First, if the patient has GI bleeding with cirrhosis, we give ciftorexone 1 gram per day in order to complete 7 days course as a prophylaxis against SPP. Second, if the patient has one or more previous episodes of SPP, then we have to give them outpatient prophylaxis with Bactrim double strength daily or ciprofloxacin 500 mg daily. And the third case is if the patient has inpatient cirrhosis with a fluid protein less than 1.5 and liver or renal impairment, then most likely they will benefit from SPP prophylaxis with Bactrim or ciprofloxacin. And you have to discontinue on discharge. This will help to protect against hepatorenal syndrome. Thank you for listening to our lecture. If we have many other lectures related to liver diseases like hepatic encephalopathy, hepatorenal syndrome, acute liver failure. Please take the time to check the content and if you like it, please subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you.